All right, welcome to PyCSE again. Today we're going to talk about the Gaussian distribution in statistics and uh, how we can use it in Python. So the, the Gaussian distribution, sometimes called a normal distribution, and apologies to Weird Al for this terrible pun, plays a really central role in statistics. There's a theorem that says when you make lots of measurements, they, uh, the distribution of them tends to become a normal distribution, and there's a lot of really uh, powerful things we can use it for. So the lucky, uh, luckily in this, um, in this video, we won't actually have to do any math or equations because SciPy uh, in the statistics module provides functions that do everything. So all you have to know is what is it you want. So let's start um, by importing a few things. We'll, we'll use NumPy arrays and we'll be making some plots and we'll do from SciPy.stats import norm. Norm is one of many uh, distributions, and we will only talk about this particular one today. And, um, and I'll show you just actually just a handful of the features that, that it has. So the first thing we'll talk about is the probability density function. And that is, what is the probability of getting any number from this distribution? And we access that by the, the PDF function on norm. So norm is, uh, is, is like a class. Um, or an instance, and you can ask for the probability to get any, uh, any number you want. Now the normal distribution uh, is defined by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. And I don't know why they did this, but the mean is given by the, uh, the location, LOC argument. So let's, let's do the standard one. And the standard deviation is defined by the scale. All right, and if we run this, and you're familiar with the uh, normal distribution, the mean is zero and it's the most probable number and it's about 40% uh, probability of getting the, the mean out of this. And if we make this, um, let's say about uh, two, then we only have a 5% chance. And if we make it minus two, then it's also a 5% chance. So the normal distribution is symmetric about the mean and it's not that convenient to, to look at these numbers. So let's go ahead and uh, make an array of, of numbers. Let's do minus three to three. That should cover more than 99% of the normal distribution. And this function is vectorized, so I can put x in here, and that will give us um, 50 points from minus three to three. And now let's go ahead and plot them. All right, and here is the famous uh, kind of bell curve. You can see it's, it goes down to nearly zero. If we did this from minus four to four, it would probably be even more, more like zero. And you see it goes to zero, it becomes flat. This is an exponentially decaying Gaussian uh, function like e to the minus x squared, uh, such that the area under this curve is one. So the probability of getting any, uh, like um, all of the numbers is one and it goes up to 0 0.4. So that's the first feature that I wanted to show you about the norm um, function in here. So let's see what, what uh, the documentation says. Norm is um, a normal continuous variable. It actually has all of these um, properties over here. We're going to look at PDF, we just did, RVS, CDF, and fit down here, and also uh, PPF. Okay, so the next thing that people often want to do is, is ask, you know, what's the area under this curve? That is, if you want to know what's the probability of getting a number less than zero, it is the integral from minus infinity up to zero. And you can do that with the quad function, or if you knew what the formula was, you could integrate it. But in fact, um, we have a CDF function that I'll show you in a little bit. Before we get to that, let's talk about how can we sample this distribution. So we might want to make a, a sample, and you can do that. Let's just do norm.rvs, and we have to say how many samples we want. Uh, that is, what's the shape? And we have to say what, um, what distribution we want it from. So normally I'll, we'll stick with the standard one, the mean zero, standard deviation of one, and then we'll say, um, let's say the size is equal to 10. And what this will do 
is generate 10 random numbers that are drawn from the normal distribution. Now, how do we know that? Well, we have to look at a histogram. And when we do that, we want to make the density uh, to be true so that we see it to be normalized. And it's not that obvious here um, that this is normal. So let's start adding some more. Let's go to 100, maybe 1,000. Um, let's make the number of bins be a little bit bigger. Let's say 20. So that's starting to look pretty good, about 10,000. Um, that's starting to look like the normal distribution we saw. You see the peak uh, probability is around 0.4. It goes to zero around here and here. Um, so let's just copy this. And define it into a variable. And now let's do the NumPy. This is just a NumPy array. And we can calculate the standard deviation and the mean from these. And you see it is about 0 and about 1, as, uh, as we noted. So in the limit of many, many samples, you get exactly the, uh, these properties. Now, I did this manually with mean and uh, standard deviation, which are two functions on in NumPy. Um, we can actually do it a little bit nicer, if you like. We can say norm.fit samples where samples is defined up here, and it will calculate exactly those same numbers for you and return them. So if you have data that you want to analyze and you know you want to fit a normal distribution to it, this is the way to do it. It's equivalent to taking the mean and the standard deviation and assuming that, uh, that they're normal. Okay, so back to that question about um, what fraction of points is uh, less than zero. It is symmetric, so by you know, kind of intuition, it should be about 50%. Um, you can figure it out by looking at the area under this curve, and the area under the whole curve should be 1. So this is called the cumulative density function. So let's take a couple, look at a couple of examples of this. So norm.cdf. If I put np.infinity np here, this is going to give me 1, which is the total area under the curve from minus infinity to positive infinity. If we put it at zero, then we can see that it's exactly half because uh, it is symmetric. And we can use this to find the area between two, uh, two curves. So uh, going back up to here, let's say I want to see the area from minus one to one. We do that by finding the area up to one and then subtracting the area up to minus one. So we can, uh, we can write it like this, cdf one minus norm.cdf minus one. And this is the classic, about 68% of the samples fall within plus or minus one standard deviation. And if you make it uh, plus or minus two, you see a little bit more than 95% of the samples fall between plus or minus two standard deviations. And that, that is the origin of that uh, kind of guideline in there. We'll see in a moment how to find what the actual 95% uh, interval is. Um, it is something like 1.96 and minus 1.96, I think, something like that, pretty close. Um, we don't normally do it this way. What we would normally do is use the PPF. And so if we want to uh, find what, the, um, what those intervals are, we have to ask a slightly more refined question if we want 95% centered around zero, that means that there are two and a half percent on the positive side and negative two and a half percent on the negative side. So we're going to uh, ask for the norm.ppf of 0 0.975. That is uh, from zero to uh, 0.975. And let's see what that is. So that's 1.959. And then we would want, um, on the other side, norm.ppf of 0 0.025. Now, these two numbers add up to 1, obviously, and we have 2.5% on the left side and 2.5% on the right side. And so the actual 95% uh, window is minus 1.9599, which is pretty close to 1.96, uh, which is also pretty close to 2. 
Okay, so that is um, that is the main uh, kind of points I wanted to go over. Again, you can go th to the uh, documentation and see a few more things, like there is a function for the log PDF. All of these take a, s a location and scale for the mean and the standard deviation. Um, there's a, a CDF and a log CDF. Uh, if you're really deep in statistics, you have these survival functions and log survival functions. There's some uh, moment analysis that can give you the moments. Here's the fit that I talked about. Uh, and then there's, um, oh, look at this interval. Let's check that out real quick, just for fun. JP, so norm dot interval. And we're going to say that um, alpha is equal to, let's see what uh, 0 0.05 says. Uh, 0 0.95, so if alpha equals 0 0.95, then one minus alpha is the uh, um, 05 that I mentioned, and this is another way of getting those two intervals that's equivalent to, to this thing up here. So, so that's basically it. There are more, more things, um, and there are more distributions. So there are many distributions, um, other distributions, beta distributions, chi-squared, um, et cetera, et cetera and you can learn about them um, and maybe we'll, we'll discuss those in another video. All right, so thanks for, uh, for coming by and listening to the statistics in Python. This is covered in the um, Point Breeze Publishing book on intermediate PyCSC in an introduction to statistics. If you want to learn more about it, you can find the link to that in the description. If you like the video, um, please subscribe to the channel and that way you'll hear about uh, future videos when they come out. Thanks, 